I'm Tilvi Takala and I'm an artist working with intervention, sort of performative intervention, which becomes video work mostly, and I'm interested in social behavior. Today we have um, Pilvi Takala here for our double feature screening tonight. And the film we've chosen to see tonight is Drive With Care, a film from 2014. Um, and the film is based on, yeah, on the story that you are working as a teacher in a boarding school in the USA. Yeah. So how come that you chose to work in this boarding school? I'm really interested in any sort of uh, social situations where people come together in groups and form sets of rules. But then like the boarding school is really this kind of isolated, very closed community. And a friend of mine who's an artist uh, went back to the US and started to work in this place. So from that moment I was like, do you think there's a way I could access this? And we, we figured that the best way is that I just go there as someone who visits her. And then she said I help her, she was teaching art. So I wasn't officially employed, but I was like just hanging out as her friend and somehow no one thought it's weird. Well, actually in the film you tell more or less the story of the teacher yep. Yep. Um, in connection with the pupils, but in the end it's uh, the focus on the teacher yep. and how they um, feel to live in this, um, in this community. There it's like you sleep there. Yep. The kids come and they also the thing about the kids that they don't have their parents there. So your role is kind of, you have more roles that are officially given to you than someone and only else. teach biology or something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Because then also it's like also you're always watched. I mean you're yeah. watched by the other teachers, you're watched by the board of, mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. people living, working there. And then you also have the, the pupils yeah. also observing you and giving you marks mm -hmm. if you're a good teacher yeah. or sympathetic or... Yeah, yeah the constant emotional. grading of like yeah. how well you do as a community member is, I mean, that also exists elsewhere, but there it's so like extreme that I thought it was fascinating to look at that and it can then translate to, to other situations too. But what could be the idea behind getting, becoming a boarding school teacher? My story is really about the young, young teachers. It's actually like mostly from one uh, teacher. And this is really the phase where you are testing sort of like, can you survive this? Then I also talked to the older teachers and they have become the institution. Like for them, they don't even think about these things because they are natural to them. For it's them, like then they are, yeah. And then like if you, there's also like a hierarchy in terms of economics, like the kids who go to the school, they're much like, they're much richer than the teachers. The salary of the teacher can be like less than the tuition of the school. So there's this like hierarchy where then if you teach there, you can, your kids can go to that school. There's like a... It's a benefit. There, yeah. There's like, it is a safe life in a way, if you can survive it. So, and what I find interesting always is when people negotiate the conditions they're in and whether they resist some of them or, or what, do, what do you accept from outside? Like, how much will it change in your life to be, you know, compromised? Because we always have to do that. It's just an extreme example of the little things we actually always make a choice of but then when when they become habits then we don't know anymore yeah. and then some suffer greatly and then they try to get a job in a school that is yeah. a normal where you get to go home <laughs> after you have your own life <laughs> yeah. after school yeah because I always was thinking um, I find it very interesting that that even one girl always wants to be hugged by mm. the teacher yeah what kind of demands the, the kids sort of like throw at you. It could be anything and you always have to assess what is acceptable, what is normal, what is something that you can then respond to and wh where you have to like put the, the limit. But on the other hand it's very nurturing environment also for those who feel like they fit in and, and for who like it it's, doesn't come with trouble to define these borders. So it's when you were there in the, um, in the school um, you were undercover, but you were like the friend of the art yeah. school teacher. So um, what comes first, the idea how to film or is it the surroundings, <laughs> everything together? Yeah. No, yeah. first is like interest in certain uh, place or situation and filming came really last. So I was just like putting myself in situations where I could 
hear how people experience their everyday life. And my friend was sort of like a wingman, like she was initiating discussions, because it's weird if I go and ask a lot of questions, I'm new, but also if you spend enough time, you end up hearing what people think, really. Yeah. So in the end, the narrative or the whole structure of the of driver's care came in the end. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the end, I tried to make it like <coughs> coherent to make sense and introduce a bit what's the environment and so on. In the end, you're mostly the protagonist of your yeah. films. Yeah. Actually, in the back lady, as in trainee or in the real Snow White, you're acting. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you're acting in an in a behavior which is not expected. And it's actually a sociological method of research, like breaching experiment. Like when you breach a rule, you see like how important it is to that community. Yeah. Um, and those differ from place to place. But then also for me, like the guideline is something that feels like unknown, because you can break a lot, lot of rules and have people freak out in a lot of different ways. <laughs> like yeah. it's obvious, but then I try to find something where it's seems like a very gray area and actually the rules are not defined yeah. but it's more about this is a, a, a negotiation process like yeah. now we can negotiate how to how to work yeah. and there are many situations where we could actually negotiate but we don't see that yeah. we don't see that there's like a opening to negotiate so the rule breaking is more like a disturbance yeah and like a way to open say, yeah. up yeah. some discussion yeah. about yeah. Yeah about like what are the rules actually here. <laughs> okay, you have a gallery, but you're not a gallery video artist, one really has to say. So you also showed your work on, on many huge festivals, film yeah, festivals. Yeah. So I also have the impression that you rather, yeah, you rather work in this area than in this, how you say, freeze art area. Right? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, my work is quite flexible in terms of where it can be shown. And that is a value that I sort of consciously like so making maybe also I don't have the skill to make fancy installation in big museum spaces or <laughs> galleries but but doing that would mean that first I would have to find that space and the money to do that and then second I, I, people would have to go there to experience it so I really like single channel video and also the, the type of video I make is not so sensitive to the equipment you have and you know like of course it's nicer to see it properly but then if you look at it on your laptop, you still get the sort of point. So it's, uh, that's important for me also in terms of being like yeah. public. But yeah. film festivals, so it's one other audience that is quite small, of course, like yeah. experimental short film festivals. Yeah. Like, limited, but yeah. but yeah. it's another, it's a different audience. And, yeah. and I'm happy to, like, I'm happy that there can be many places to, to um, show. Thank you so much for coming here and having the interview My with pleasure. me. My pleasure, thank you.